I'm John Skinner and this supports chapter 11 in my book Fishing the Bucktail. So I've got a real nice morning here and I'm about a mile away from where I plan to fish and uh, on the way uh, working my way down there I decided to stop on some interesting structure and uh, I'm sitting in maybe three feet of water and there's a little bit of a channel that I'm casting into is about six feet of water and uh, during this trip I'm going to be focusing on uh, casting over shallow water, casting uh, over sandbars and so forth and uh, it's going to work out pretty well. You'll get to see the rig in a minute and uh, as far as retrieve speed um, several times during the video you'll be able to see the reel just like that and also if you just watch the line uh, just above the reel you'll be able to get a good feel for the uh, retrieve speed. So that's a real nice one. I've got a 19 inch uh, minimum limit here and that one certainly doesn't uh, need any measuring. Nice way to start the day. Okay, now I'm uh, to my destination. We'll, we'll get a little look at the rig here. Um, at the bottom I have a 3 quarter ounce bucktail. I'm putting a 4 inch Gulp Alive swimming mullet on that. One foot above that I have a small dropper loop with a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook and on that hook is a three inch Berkeley Gulp shrimp uh, new penny color and uh, you'll get to see the rig plenty of times uh, throughout this video and uh, I have a separate video on my channel that shows the rigging details. So I've chosen a spot here away from any other boats uh, actually about a half a mile away there's a party boat and several boats around it but um, I've picked an area away from everybody and it's pretty nice. Uh, I'm in a, a channel that's maybe seven feet deep. It's usually I'm in about six feet of water but I'm casting up onto a sandbar where there's only two or three feet of water and uh, as the current takes me off that bar um, there's a second edge there and uh, you're going to be able to see that rip very clearly so it's a really nice structure. So that's something you're not going to get to see too often, a, a jumping fluke. Um, so we're going to watch that again in slow motion. Okay. So my objective here is to um, drift along this bar and I'm, I'm staying on the deeper end which is like I said about seven feet and I'm casting up onto the bar and letting that rig work its way off the edge and many of the fish are hitting right along the edge and uh, what's nice about this way of fishing for, for people that have boats that they have to worry about how much water they're in um, you know this is a very nice way for them to ca uh, cover shallow structure that they wouldn't normally be able to cover without hitting bottom so um, this this really works out nicely. And I mentioned retrieve speed before, but it's it's really just an objective of staying uh, near the bottom. And as I come off the edge of the bar, um, a lot of times I'll slow it down or um, even give it a little bit of a pause to make sure the rig gets near the bottom. Because with these fish, um, ideally you'd like to be about a foot off the bottom. You don't really want to be more than two feet off the bottom. Casting as opposed to vertical jigging is a really nice way to go when the, the drift is lousy, if you had wind against the current or uh, if you were around slack current. Um, it's a nice way to keep the, the bait moving and cover some ground. Um, <clears throat> also, it works very well from shore and I've got a video on my channel uh, showing that as well. That fish was very lightly hooked so I figured I could just let it shake off instead of having to handle it. So the hits can feel a lot different uh, casting and retrieving as opposed to fishing straight up and down for these fish. Uh, a lot of times uh, you'll be jigging along and what you'll feel is slack and that's a fish that has grabbed it 
end is is moving towards you and when you are jigging and you feel slack like that and on a retrieve you just set the hook hard and almost every time you're going to hook a fish doing that and throughout this video there's many times where you know i'll be getting bumps and you'll see me you know give a little swing and a miss and uh you know it just doesn't matter just keep it moving the fish is not going to give up it's just going to keep coming at it if it has to hit two or three times it will and uh, eventually you get it and you know a nice result of not giving them a lot of time just hitting them right away is you know all these fish end up lip hooked so nothing is gut hooked and the fish aren't being damaged so this is going to become challenging for me here um, probably 99 percent of the people who fish for these fish are drifting and uh, this gentleman um, has decided he's going to troll that edge that I'm drifting and uh, he's got lines out behind him he's going right in front of me uh, all I could do was just uh, bail out of there so I paddled the uh, well up current um, because uh, I just can't fish there with him dragging the lines right in front of me and uh, oh well that's the way it works out sometimes The fight can be very deceptive too when you're dragging these fish towards you as opposed to going straight up and down. This one definitely surprised me. So that was a real nice fish. Um, and I've been showing you the larger fish. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to run uh, one drift unedited. It's a six minute drift. You'll get some feel for uh, how much ground I'm covering. And uh, you'll also see that um, you know I'm really having to cull through a lot of small fish to get the legal ones and to get the nicer ones. Um, so this drift will give you a good feel for that. Right, the rod is a medium action seven footer. Uh, more specifically, it's a seven foot pen regiment rated 10 to 17 pound test line. The reel is a pen conflict 4000 and it's spooled with 15 pound test spider wire stealth braid. At the terminal end, there's a couple feet of 20 pound test fluorocarbon. There's a surgeon's loop at the bottom to attach the bucktail. One foot above that is a small dropper loop to attach a 3.0 Gamagatsu bait holder hook. The bucktail, which is a three-quarter ounce in this case, is tipped with a four-inch Berkeley Gulp of Y swimming mullet. And the uh, hook above the bucktail has a three-inch Berkeley Gulp Alive shrimp um, new penny color. So that's a real small one. Uh, you might notice throughout this video that uh, the vast majority of the fish are hitting the shrimp. And you'll notice here that um, I'm being cheap here. I'm trying to reuse this bait over and over, and uh, I don't care that it's cracked. Um, I'm just 
take it off, put it back on, stick the hook through a different part. As long as it's laying flat and it stays on the hook, uh, you know, it seems to work well. And you can catch a lot of these fish on one of the shrimp or one of the swimming mullets. One of my favorite things about fishing with the gulp is you, you don't have to change bait, you don't have to cut new bait. Uh, it, I really think it helps you catch more fish because you don't waste time screwing around with uh, putting new bait on all the time or checking your bait. You just keep the stuff on, keep throwing it, keep catching. So that's the last cast that I make on this drift, and uh, if you're keeping score, um, I made six casts on that drift and I caught six fish, but they were all small. So I've been trying to keep my distance from this other boat, and it's uh, been a little bit of a challenge near the end of the drift. So I just short casted in that case, so I wouldn't... Uh, have any issues with the lines that he's dragging out behind his boat.
So this one's definitely a keeper, and I'm allowed five. So uh, and this is the fifth one. So the uh, the trip is done for me. So I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel.